this streamer has found a way to play games with her mind. Finding success in games like Elden Ring, Halo and Trackmania all without the use of a controller. And the best part? It's not just Perry that can do it. Mind Control Gaming is exactly as it sounds. It is gaming with your mind. So in my case, I have an EEG that picks up my brain activity, and then I've just translated that into pushing buttons on a virtual controller. An EEG, or an electroencephalogram, which I've had to spend a few weeks practicing how to say, <laughs> is uh, a bunch of electrodes that go on your scalp, and it picks up the electromagnetic brain activity that, that comes from your head. It can look and see what kind of activity is going on, and if I've trained it to recognize what this means, then it can look and see if you're doing that. For instance, imagining something coming towards you could make the character attack in game, something lifting dodge, and something sinking in water heal. I can move the character by tilting my head. The kind of things that you should say to me to get some brain activity are anything that would elicit a really strong emotion. The best one that I've seen so far is fear and shock. <laughs> so when I'm playing horror games, it lights up if, if there's a jump scare. Okay, fear, so... Uh, I don't know what to say. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed that that worked. <laughs> That's not good. That's a bad sign. That's a bad, bad sign. Ah! Bogey, I'm running. Oh dear. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Right now, I'm really, really into games like anything that's dark fantasy RPG, like Souls-like games, games that are really difficult and punishing because I think maybe that's just part of my personality. <laughs> It took me about six months to make it work the first time, just to make it push a button in the game. And right now I'm on 10 months into the project and it's still not <laughs> perfect. I may have missed the turn. The main obstacle though wasn't building the controller or doing the coding. The main obstacle was getting the mental commands to work. So actually thinking of what I should be visualizing to record. And I had to train them up for about I think in total we're on 600 hours of, of doing the same pattern over and over again and telling the software what to remember. And that's just of the visualizations I have now. So there were loads of other iterations that didn't work because they were too similar to each other or they just didn't make any sense. Or I was, there was one where I was imagining pulling something down from the sky and then I realized about three hours into doing it that that's not going to work because then I'm not looking at the monitor, <laughs> I'm not looking at the game. <laughs> but my first moment where I thought there's no way this is possible, I can't believe that this is happening, this must be a fluke, this must be a mistake, was the first time that it worked. So I was running around with the character Steve in Minecraft and it was the first ever visualization. It was pushing a block forward and I wanted him to swing his fist in mine and then I did it and then he did it. And it was just the wildest thing. I was absolutely blown away. And I thought this is such a far out idea based on something that I've never tried before. And as far as I'm aware, very few people have. And it worked. And I had to do it over and over again, not to test it, not to make sure, not to get it better, but just to believe that that was what, that, that actually was me doing it and not some random wild error. I felt absolutely mind blown, I guess, part of the pun. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Uh, no. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's calibrate this bad boy. So you're literally going to visualise something you see as heavy. It can be the cube mm -hmm. that you see on screen. And you're going to imagine pushing it forward. OK. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely losing focus. All right. OK. No. Oh, rubbish. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Is now I'm like, can't perform. So you immediately start thinking about it.
I saw it move, but I didn't know. I thought that was like, I don't know if that was a problem. I, oh! That is insane. I'm now in Elden Ring, and I'm gonna try and cast a spell through pushing an imaginary block. I'm already thinking about it a little bit. Right, here we go. Yes! I didn't think I was gonna get it as well. Yes! That's big. I can feel it. I must say you feel so powerful. This is like when you first pick up a video game and you do something incredibly like rad, like in skate, you do a kickflip with an analog stick and you like discover a mechanic for the first time and it's not like anything else you've experienced in gaming. This is unbelievable. The feeling is just ridiculous, but you also still unnerving a little bit. <laughs> it used to give me a headache at the beginning, but that's just from the headset itself. The actual process, it requires a lot of focus and energy, but it doesn't hurt. I don't know how this has affected my brain properly, but I have noticed that my focus has improved a lot, which as someone with ADHD has really helped me just do things day-to-day -day life when I'm not gaming. You kind of have to focus a lot when you are trying to, for example, defeat a boss in Elden Ring, because the way that the mental commands and visualizations work is that you have to think of the same thing every single time in the exact same way. So if you deviate from that a little bit, if you think about something else, then it just won't work. So when you have a boss running towards you, it can be really difficult to focus on, for example, sinking something and drinking a potion. But that's just practice. And I think that's why it has really helped improve my focus in general, because being able to block that out and go internal in terms of what you're imagining is a really, really useful skill, I think. The technology is out there to be able to control things with your mind. So they're controlling loads of prosthetics with it, but no one's really applied it to gaming. And by getting the technology out there, my, my thought process was that, one, it would be a really cool thing to do, but also that it might raise a little bit of awareness for what's possible. And a lot of the time when we think about accessibility issues, we think about what is the bare necessities. But gaming and being involved with what your friends are doing and being involved with entertainment and media is also a necessity. So if we can do something with this uh, at some point in time with enough funding and development, then that would be really cool. Okay, I feel like I'm getting... Am I like hilariously sweaty? <laughs> no, 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 you're great, you're great, you're great. Oh my God, I'm so sweaty. Do you want some powder? No, it's all right, we'll embrace it. And there's the controller, your brain activity. My brain activity is smaller <laughs> yeah, than yours? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> crikey, something's wrong with me. <laughs> 